Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us live. We're here today with uh, James Lloyd from the Coral Reef Alliance, and we're really excited to talk about their story and their organization and um, what they're doing around storytelling. And we have some great um, images that we're going to show you from their social media channels as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you coming to the TechSoup office. So we're here at the headquarters in San Francisco. So thanks for joining. Um, so the first thing that I want to start off is just tell me a little bit about your mission and um, what your organization's all about. Uh, great. Thank you so much for uh, inviting us here today. So the Coral Reef Alliance, or Coral, as we go by um, a shortened version of it, we started in 1994 to really galvanize the dive community around conservation. And it was started here in uh, San Francisco in the Bay Area. And since then, we have grown into an international organization. We have four sites uh, around the world, main sites, uh, one here domestically in Hawaii, as well as Fiji, Indonesia and Honduras. And so our mission is very straightforward. It's uniting communities to save coral reefs. Um, and we're all about community-based conservation efforts here that can help reduce threats to uh, local reefs. Yeah, so tell me a little bit about some of the projects that you're currently working on. Um, I know it's a kind of sad and exciting time for coral reefs. Um, so what are some things that your organization's currently working on? Uh, yeah, so I'm um, sure people are aware of the bleaching events that have occurred in the Great Barrier Reef, and uh, Chasing Coral has also brought a lot of uh, media and coverage to what's happening to coral reefs around the world. And so we at the Coral Reef Alliance don't necessarily focus on all the negativity, because we have hope. And a lot of our pro projects are, are centered around that. So um, for example, in West Maui, we're working there to help restore the, uh, the watershed and reducing sedimentation flow that goes downstream to the reefs. In Honduras, we're pioneering this uh, brand new conservation technique called adaptive reefscapes, which really uh, creates these networks of diverse reefs that are connected with each other so that they can survive and ad adapt to climate change. So it's really exciting stuff that's happening on the ground around the world. It's not all bad. Yes, there is a lot of bad stuff, but we have hope that you know we can save coral reefs. So I brought uh, the coral on because I really wanted to learn about storytelling. So can you tell me a little bit about how your organization values storytelling? Uh, sure. I mean, storytelling is so baked into, I think, all of our DNA as humans. We love stories. We go to the movies. You know, it, it really just, it's fun and exciting. And at Coral, uh, we recognize the value and impact that storytelling can have on someone. Um, for us as an organization, we work in the communities around the world. And so telling their story about why they depend on this reef, why they need to save it, the changes that they've seen over the years, um, the decline in reefs, the fish populations, but then also when we help them create protected areas and the fish come back and the reefs get healthy, you know, telling that story, showing photos and making people aware of what's happening to these vital ecosystems, you know, that, that says it all through the photos, the videos. So we greatly value stories to get that out there in our message that reefs can be saved and that's what we're doing on a daily basis. Yeah, I noticed on your website you had, and also on your Facebook, you were encouraging others to kind of tell your story. Um, so that was a great way that they can bring awareness to your cause. And so um, there's an example of one of their um, cards that you can send to people where it's a graphic and there's some text on um, a story. And so I thought that that example was really great. So I have that example here. But can you talk a little bit more about that project and kind of what you're encouraging there um, and how you kind of have people advocate for your cause and tell your story? Sure. Uh, so on our website, there is a, a section that's what can you do? How can you get involved? How can you uh, save coral reefs? Um, and the e-cards that you mentioned, this is one of the examples where you can go to our website, pick from five different cards, uh, and send it to someone and it has a pretty picture of a reef, a turtle. Uh, there's a few different options there. It tells you what it is, what the threat is, you know, what their threat status is, 
And then there's ways that, hey, if you want to learn more about coral reefs, go to our website, sign up for our monthly e-newsletter, follow our social media channels um, so that you can find out what we're doing, find out the news of what's going on with corals around the world, the good and the bad, um, to help you know, make a change for coral reefs. Yeah, and then um, that's I really liked those. I actually signed up and <laughs> had had one sent to me. So if anybody wants to send one of those, you can go to their website and um, input your email, and then it will send it to you or a friend. And I, I really like that. Um, and then also your Facebook. I think that that's what drew me in when I was looking at our members and some some members in the Bay Area. I thought your Facebook was just such an active community and group, um, very engaged. Um, so we have some examples that I wanted to show. But what what are how, like how do you keep your I know you manage the social so how do you keep everybody engaged I thought um, the way that you have kind of some examples where you're showing um, asking people to vote for their favorite image or you're doing a fun fact um, so talk a little bit more about those kind of how you manage the social and keep people engaged sure uh, so uh, when I started um, we already had a really large Facebook following of over 150 some thousand people. Uh, currently we have just over 160,000 uh, Facebook followers. And uh, my boss was like, you know what, have fun. It's a great community. They love pretty pictures. Experiment. And I really took that to heart. And so with, you mentioned every month before the month starts, we do cover photo contests. So I pick three photos. Um, <laughs> either from internally or donated photos by the staff so that people can vote which one is their favorite and then that's our cover photo for the month. Um, and those photos are acquired through a lot of different ways. Uh, they're donated by divers and supporters of ours that they go out on the reef, they donate their photos. Um, typically they sell these photos too to make money off of them but they give them to us because they recognize the power of a photo can have on somebody um, our executive director is a diver and he never goes diving without his camera so a lot of those images we have are from him as well and then I also do some cultivation following people that dive on reefs or you know take photos or anything like that use certain hashtags hashtag mm -hmm. save coral reefs hashtag coral reefs and I'll reach out to them and say hey you have some really great photos can we share these? You know, can we work on something, do a cover photo contest, or um, sometimes we'll do species quiz. So can you name that species of coral, or what that fish is, or where was this photo taken? Mm -hmm. um, and I continue to do these things because our audience loves them. Uh, they love either learning about it or guessing, and they talk to each other about it, and they're like, no, it's not that species, it's this one. What's wrong with you? And so it's really fun and interesting just to see the interactions amongst themselves on the photos and articles and things that we post. And I don't know, it's I kind of look forward to it every month about, oh, I wonder which one they're going to pick, because I, I always have my favorite. Right. <laughs> um, and then it's fun to see uh, which one actually gets selected at the end of the day. Yeah, I thought that was really great and fun, and I'm following uh, now, so maybe I will contribute. I don't know if I'll be able to guess the species, but hopefully I'll learn over time. But I think that's a great takeaway for nonprofits that are looking to get more s storytelling and engagement with their communities. Is you had kind of a hack there of going after some hashtags relating to your mission and your org, and just like reaching out to people. Um, I'm sure Instagram's a, a huge one for that now that it's all about photos on there. So um, that kind of leads into my next question, which is I also took a look and saw that a lot of people are fundraising on your behalf on Facebook. And I know this is a new feature on Facebook, um, but how did that get started? And um, who are those people that are fundraising? Yeah, that's uh, a great question. And um, we've only been doing Facebook fundraisers, I think since July maybe or so. Um, and we were approached by Facebook to say, hey, we have this new thing that we've rolled out. Would you like to participate? Because we were already accepting donations online through Facebook. Um, and so they reached out, said, this is what we're doing. Are you interested? And we were like, um, sure. <laughs> uh, there wasn't really a lot of staff time that we had to do to set this up. You know, We submitted the paperwork to Facebook. They vetted us to make sure that we're a nonprofit and you know, bank accounts and all that fun stuff. And then uh, we weren't really sure how receptive it would be to our audience. Um, but uh, we're really glad that we did it because we've had over 35 fundraisers since July. Wow. 
We've taken in um, over $19,000 in donations, and this is all through people who are followers, supporters, fans of Coral, and they take it upon themselves to create their own fundraiser, reach out to their networks to say, hey, I'm fundraising for the organization, so there's no marketing on our side whatsoever to promote these. It's all through their own networks. Um, and then the money just gets sent directly to us through Facebook, which is wonderful. And actually, we've created a um, on our website a how-to guide on how to set up your own Facebook fundraiser. We have downloadable cover photos that people can use with their um, fundraiser just because it really took off with our community in, in a very surprising and pleasant way. So if you don't have it, I recommend <laughs> get on board with Facebook fundraising because it's really easy to do and uh, it's a great for us, it's been a great payoff for how little it took to actually do it. Yeah, it was really active. And I was like, this just started. So um, you all are doing great. And I think that's a great idea to make a kind of a toolkit for people to do that. Um, I didn't really think about that. So uh, actually providing them with assets and stuff could totally encourage that. Um, so that's a, another great tip for nonprofits. And then my next question is kind of as the communications man manager, what have you learned? So kind of like lessons learned, maybe it's something that you failed at or succeeded at. Um, I think we want to know either or. Um, and so what is something that other nonprofits can kind of take away from, um, you know, nonprofit professionals? That's most of our members. Sure. Uh, so I think there's two big things that uh, I've learned at Coral and in social media in general. And the first one is that uh, social media, though, can be daunting and some people are afraid of it. It's, it's actually fun. Uh, I've been to a lot of conferences, uh, communications conferences and meetings and things like that where people are like, oh, social media, I spend like the least amount of time I can on it because it's so you know, you can't control anything and uh, you never know what people are gonna say, but I have the opposite view. Um, I think that this is a great tool to engage with your audience, to put out your story, to share those photos, to see what people really resonate with, um, which leads into my second thing, uh, my hack so-called, mm -hmm. is to have fun, experiment, like I mentioned with the quizzes, you know, find out what clicks with your audience, what do they resonate with, because those people, um, have self-identified that they are interested in you as an organization and what you're doing. So engage them. See what they like. See what, you know, do they like videos? Do they like photos? Maybe they want to read really dense articles about something scientific that can save coral reefs. You know, mm -hmm. that's the fun part about social is that you just don't know until you try. It's a great takeaway. You don't know until you try. <laughs> so you gotta try. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, how can others get involved uh, with your organization um, if anybody is listening now and, and wants to get involved? And I forgot to mention, if you do have a question, please ask it in the comments and we will get to it at the end. Uh, we have a variety of ways that you can get involved with Coral. If you go to our website, um, that outlines everything uh, that you can do. You can sign up for a newsletter on there, which you'll get monthly. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. Uh, you can see the what our handle is there on the screen. We're also on Twitter and Instagram. Our handle is uh, coral underscore org. Um, so that's another way that you can just follow along, see what we're doing. And that's pretty much it. the best ways is on our social platform, filling out our volunteer form, getting our newsletter, because then you basically will get a touch point from us everywhere that you are about what we're doing to help save coral reefs around the world. That's great. So everybody go like their like their stuff and follow them. Their Instagram is really cool as well. It's all pictures and it's it's really cool underwater photography. Um, and so I think we're in the midpoint of our Storymakers campaign. Um, I think our members should know about this by now. But basically our Storymakers campaign is uh, to encourage other nonprofits to tell their story. And so we have um, an e-learning or we have a a learning course on how to tell your story if you're a nonprofit that doesn't really know how. Um, and we're encouraging you to submit a photo or a video.
I don't see any questions now, but um, feel free to ask questions. And if we do get any, we can um, get James to respond. So thanks for joining us. And uh, Yeah, and if, if you have uh, specific questions to Coral, uh, please do submit through our Facebook page if you want, or you can email us at info at coral.org, um, and we'd be happy to answer those. We actually get a lot of questions from elementary, middle, high, and college students about, hey, how can I – you know, I have a question about bleaching, or how can I get involved? So totally reach out. Uh, we love hearing from people and answering their questions. And yes, we'll be working on that video because they're due by the end of the month. Yes. So <laughs> we will be submitting. And uh, thank you again for having us here today. Yeah. So submit by October 31st. So uh, make sure you get your submissions in because we're really excited to see them. And also uh, feel free to watch uh, more of our Get to Know videos. We do these series ongoing and we get to know a nonprofit and a specific topic. And we ha also have Twitter chats and we have podcasts. So we have uh, different types of mediums. So stay tuned and we look forward to uh, telling more stories. So thanks again for joining us.